We live. Welcome everybody to another episode of Cooking It with I Day. We are celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month, brought to you by Bud Light Seltzer. Your th taste buds will thank you. It is an absolute honor to have a big, big, one of the biggest pioneers for Latinos in hip hop, the one and only Fat Joe. Fat Joe! Yo, I Day, what's up? Yo, I Day. First of all, I want to say we love you, and this this is the first time I'll be cooking something other than toast <laughs> in my life. And I'm, so I'm actually excited about this. We're gonna be making empanadas. Like it's gonna be super easy. I promise you. And look, all I want to know is don't go off after this trying to start your own cooking show. Stepping in my lane because you already got Jopra. You already got Jopra. Yeah. I, I for myself here. I never said a cooking show's off limits. <laughs> I just said I couldn't cook. I you love know, I it. Check. You're gonna learn. Trust me, this is super, super easy. You recently tweeted about the importance about us learning about our culture and where our families come from so then we can show that and pass that on to our children. What does Latino mean? What does being Latino mean to you? Wow, that's a, that's a big question. Like, so when you so when you ask that question, that's almost like the world's giant octopus. So it's like, so we got Mexicans and we got uh, Guatemala and Panamanians hey. and Salvadorians and Boricuas and Colombians and Cubans and I mean, Dominicans, like it's just so much. But, uh, but, but being Latino, it's, 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 a, it's a prideful thing yes. where uh, we have a huge, Pride of being Latino, mm -hmm. family life. You know, obviously, food is very important to us. Exactly. <laughs> and so, Hispanic Heritage Month, uh, there's no better way than to do it with, with cooking, with I get. Exactly. Thank you so much. And you know that you said, of course, our family, our music, our food is a major, major part of our culture and who we are. And this is why I'm really excited about making empanadas, because throughout Latin American countries, empanadas are in almost everybody's cuisine and everybody has their own way of making it. I personally think that there's so many different ways and varieties that you can't really go wrong. I have yet to be disappointed by empanadas. Today, we're going to be making them out of ground. Turkey, did you get turkey too? I got that turkey. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before I hey, touch the stuff, I see you touched it. I got, got the I turkey. Gotta throw, I gotta throw my, my uniform on. <laughs> you you over here outshining me. You got an eight. <laughs> my man Kike, my man, he got to connect, plug me in with the, with, the, with the, he said, yo, Patron, <laughs> you gotta have the apron. And I said, okay, I'm getting busy. I'm excited about this. I'm super excited too. I promise you this is going to be really easy. So we also have red bell peppers. You have your red bell peppers? Yes, I do. Chopped Black up cheese. beautifully. Mushrooms. Yes. I have red bell, uh, bell peppers, green and yellow. I love it. I, I got mushroom. Now the mushrooms looking good. Okay. Looking delicious. Uh, we got some tomato. Not this. Got him. Uh, we got some garlic, a little bit garlic. of pito. And then <laughs> we got the cebolla, which is the onions. I got so much cebolla. And of course. And then this one I had to go into the into the culture. Only the Spanish supermarkets exactly. sell this one. This, and these this are the stuff. tapas. These are the tapas for the empanadas. We're gonna get started. Um, the first thing that you wanna start doing is you have your skillet ready for to cook up your veggies? I do. This Patricia did. Saluda a la gente, Patricia. Saluda a la gente. Hola. Buenas tardes. Yeah. <laughs> this is my assistant party. It's going down. <laughs> She's okay. Too shy. Now we got the skillets over here. Do we gotta show, move the whole camera and everything? And yeah, move the whole camera so then I could see you. So you got to set it up over there now, guys. We're moving, moving, moving. All right, come on. It's over here. So which one is a? Wait, wait. What's a skillet? What's a pan? I don't know nothing. Okay, let me see which one you have. Get the one that you're gonna use for for 
your veggies, whatever you use for your veggies. I, you can use a big one too, because we, we could take it out. We could use the same one, take it out and then make the meat on there. That's how I like to do it to keep that flavor, whatever you want to do. Okay, which one I gotta put the vegetables? Los vegetales donde? Aquí o aquí? Aquí. All right. Listo? Uh, okay, so warm up your pot. You're gonna add a little bit of oil, un poquito de aceite. Señor, de está calientado, calientado, calientito, baby. Yes. Está calientito. Oh. Joe, your Spanish is getting good. No, por supuesto, soy latino, ya tú sabes. All right, so I got a little oil, that's what I say there. We got a little oil on there already. Okay, you got the little oil ready? Is it, right? is it warm already? Is it ready? Yeah, it's warm. Okay, if you feel like it's warm, you can start off with a little bit of the onions. You're not gonna use, you're gonna use about half of the onions. <laughs> yo, Patricia, no. She been pointing at them onions the whole time, like, yo. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna throw a little onions in there. Woo! Okay. You hear that? I hear it, that's I'm gonna have to taste. It. Listen, I don't recommend tasting my own empanadas, but I might taste it. Myself. I Why? I don't know. I, I promise you, you're going to be so impressed with yourself after this. My girl, Julissa Calderon, who's actually Dominican, before I used to bake them because I was trying to be healthy. And then she's like, nah, you got to fry them. And I cooked with her. And ever since then, she changed my world, man. Wow. So you got, you got the ajo. Okay, you can throw in the, the bell peppers. Throw in your bell peppers. The bell peppers? All right, yep. red? Oh, I could have yep. put them... Different colors. Throw, throw them in there, all of them. All right, I got, I got some yellow, I got some green. You know, just getting the vibe going, you know? Parece como una bandera. Getting the vibe going. It's a thing, está calientico. Está calientico. <laughs> We're gonna let those kind of like move around for a little bit. Oh, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. It smells so good though. Did you get peas? Huh? Did you get peas? I did not get peas. It's okay. You're good. Hold on, hold on. We got peas. Oh, I thought. Yeah, we got peas. Okay. Oh, I love peas. So put peas the peas delicious. in there. Throw them in there. Pass the peas like we used to say. Pass the peas like we used to say. <laughs> Woo! So we're going to so let these. smelling like. If I only made this, I would eat it. <laughs> I'm telling you. you. Do it. If you wanted to go without using the turkey, you could definitely do a veggie empanada. But I'm a carnivore and I like meat, so, so I'm gonna- So far we healthy before we start the frying frying. You, you, speaking of health, you look amazing. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm trying. What helped, what helped you make that big health change, Joe? Huh? What what helped you make a big health change? Well, what happened was, you know, uh, uh, you know, a lot of my friends started passing away. You know, unfortunately, in the black and brown community, we eat real unhealthy. And guys was 28, 30 years old, dying of heart attacks and all that. So I had to get in that gym, eat right. You know, I mean, we shouldn't be talking so much about health right now because we are frying some shit. Right, we are talking about that. That's what I'm saying. I told you I was trying to be healthy and, and bake the empanadas, and then I was like, nah, I want to go back to my- You know, I bought the baking one. And I went up, I was price. like, yo, that's not the one. Like, <laughs> so I had to go back out and get the other one. She, she was like, we need, you know, Patricia is like the original bad joke. She eat it all. She <laughs> don't want healthy nothing. She like, yo, whenever she I get something that is, She'll take that down. She's like, nah, I'm good. You can you can throw in your mushrooms in there now. Beautiful. I like these mushrooms. These mushrooms look good. <laughs> uh, speaking yeah. of the black and brown community, Joe, I saw this post that you put up on Instagram right here with this picture of the Bronx and, and young kids. Sorry, it's in black and white. I don't have a color printer. <laughs> but I thought that this was really important. You said, this is my home where I grew up, South Bronx. We had no parks, just pissy mattresses we used as trampolines. It was almost impossible to dream or become inspired by it. This is my story as well as millions of others. I remember being 12 years old, telling my friend Louie, I will get rich or die trying. Thank God he blessed me and the world with a natural resource that came from oppressed people called hip hop. 
and you kept going about wanting to live better lives. And Joe, it, I just looked at that and I was like, that's what I'm talking about because you've been in the game for so long, right? And you grew up with hip hop. And when it comes to hip hop, I really think that Latinos are often left out of that for whatever reason. And I think that for the longest, hip hop has represented both the black and brown communities because we come well, you know, you know, hip -hop, you know, hip hop was birthed by Latinos and black people. So in the South Bronx, where I'm from, Puerto Ricans and blacks started hip hop. Then uh, there wasn't really like prominent like rappers. So we had DJs like Charlie Chase. Um, we had the rock steady crew with crazy legs, the break dances. These are all elements of hip hop. And yep. then as rappers, we had Tito from the Fearless Four. So we've always been embedded and, and it's always been our culture you know, Latino and black culture. And then it expands to everybody that loves yeah. hip hop, whether you Asian, white, whatever, everybody who loves hip hop. Hip hop is almost like a sub religion. It really it's is. Like, like you get, you get as offended as a Latina as anybody else if somebody disrespect hip hop. Like how yeah, dare yeah. you, how dare you? Do you remember the first time or how old you were when hip hop first resonated with you? Man, I was about four or five years old. My brother, uh, I was about four or five years old. When I was about eight, nine years old, my brother used to go to the jams and the block party, the Zulu Nation jams and block parties. Ooh. And he would bring me back cassette tapes of the parties because I was too young and I would study the cassettes and um as well as my mom back in the days there was no Serato Pro Tools nothing mm -hmm. these DJs would carry 20 30 crates of work uh, of records vinyl so my brother used to carry Grandmaster Flash's crates wow back in the days wow so, yeah yeah, yeah. We, I was born in the Mecca the ground zero of hip hop no Let's that part. You spoke about some some Latinos in hip hop, oh, some of the early, some of the greats. Who inspired you the most? Well, they all inspired me in their own way, but Cypress Hills, uh, they did it big like I wanted to do. It. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't want to be just a rep. I want to be a superstar. You know what I mean? So Cypress Hills, they superstars, they rock stars. They've been doing stadiums since forever. So those are really, you know, they, they, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, they the Latinos I look up to. You know, Be Real with Send Dog and them. They, they, they the ones. They, you know? they started the way early on. We're going to continue to talk about that. I just want to make sure, are your veggies cooked? Are they good? My veggies might be overcooking at this point. Nah, I think they're good. I think, trust me, I think they're good. You can add, do you have a little bit of your garlic salt? Yeah, yeah. Is there such thing called? Uh, Put a little bit of that in there, just a tiny bit. Overcook your veggies. Ah, you're good. Uh -huh. <laughs> are, they, are they crispy? Is there is there such thing called veggie frito? Like, veggie uh, frito, super frito. <laughs> and of course, we can. The rich player, he's watching my brother. He said, "This is super dope." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yo, I'm telling you, after this, you're going to become a professional. You're going to be cooking. You're going to be in the oh kitchen my God. all the time. Your daughter was saying that you never cooked, Joe. Right here. Little garden. Boom. And spe speaking of Latinos and hip hop, we're gonna, if you're done with that, you can put that to the side. Put that to the side, and then you want to get your skillet that you're going to use to cook. Also, I should take it off the heat now and put it on yeah, the side? Yeah, take it off the heat. And now you want to get the one that you're going to use to cook the meat on. Yes. Uh, another skillet, and then this, this is it. No, otro más necesito a poner la carne. If you want, you could take that. If you want, you could take the vegetables out of that one and use that same one. Oh, so dame un plato, un plato plástico y plástico y yo uso el mismo sartén. Joe, yeah, I, 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 I huh? Fact, Joe knows Spanish, huh? They be lying. Good Spanish too. Like, I don't know. I know. Joe, we can't talk know. about obviously the.
paving of Latinos and hip hop without giving you your flowers. And you, you early on were someone that came on and, and brought this light to Latinos and hip hop. But we can't continue to talk about that without the way that you paved the way for big pun to come into hip hop. Do you remember the very first day that you ever met Pun? Oh man. Pun, I met him outside of Bodega in the Bronx. And uh, and it was these guys rapping, him and these guys. And then um, he started rapping and he blew my mind. I threw him in my car, right? The second he said one rap, I uh -huh. threw him right in my car. And I was like, yo, I'm signing you. Come to the studio with me. And he told me all about his life. The first second I met him, in 10 minutes, Pun told me, you know, how he grew up, he grew up hard, you know, tough. Just, you know, he just confided in me really, 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 really fast. And you know, when you're growing up in the hood, you know, it's more of a like a machismo thing that you don't let people know your business and all that. But right. for some reason, he really trusted me. He said, this is gonna be my big brother. And I'm gonna tell them everything about me and, and the rest is history. What was so special about Pun that you saw very Pun was early? better than everybody. That's what was special. So Big Pun is a freak of nature. Yes. Big Pun is like an Eminem, like a Jay-Z, like a, a, a freak of nature. Like these people were born for that. Like. You know, that's their specialty, <laughs> you know. It really is. And yeah. he was better than everybody. And forever, and he opened up and being the first Latino to go platinum, like. Double that platinum. Absolutely crazy. Do you remember the day that he was nominated for a Grammy and going to the Grammys? Well, we went to the Grammys in LA. He had the finger waves. What we got, uh, uh, garlic let's, now? Let's throw onion, onion, more onions. onions. Okay, so. We went to LA, we rented the big mansion. Uh, we rented the big mansion. He had the hairstylist come and do his hair like Matt Dre and them with the finger waves. And we had these, it's an infamous picture of it where we look like superheroes. Two Latino super kingpins or something. And, uh, and we, when we walked in there, Ricky Martin was singing, Live in love, I don't know, girl. Like he was doing all that. And we were looking around, there was nothing but celebrities. We'd never been to nothing like that. And then we found out from the Grammy people that uh, we had lost the Grammy earlier. It was before camera. Yes. And he turned around, he said, he got so mad, he said, Yo, let's go fuck these people. So I said, I said, yo, pun. He was like, fuck him, we out of here. I said, yo, pun, Smokey Robinson, that's Kirk Franklin, that's, what do you, it's Ricky, let's go. He's like, I'm not with like, it. I waited my whole life to go to some something like that, and we walk right out. He's like, I'm good, if I didn't thing. get the Grammy, I'm out. I'm not gonna stay here. Huh? No, he he's like, out. I didn't, the Grammy, what well, I I didn't want to leave, but well, I had to leave. You had to bounce. Yeah, what was the most brother, I had to keep it real with him. <laughs> what was the most inspirational thing about Pun to you? What inspired you the most? Well, the pride I knew that Pun, I knew Pun was better than me, even though I was representing the Latinos. How much I put in the whole thing? All of it. Throw it all in there. Okay. You're gonna you're gonna So even though Okay, okay, I was out before him and I put him on. I knew he yep. was better than me. I knew he was like our Bob Marley, our, you know, like that. And so I said, I said, yo, I'm going to put them on and I'm going to do it for the people. And I knew the pride of Latinos was out of control because we finally had a guy that was like that guy, you know? Yeah. Do you? <laughs> It's without a <laughs> Yeah, I they don't ever hear me talk Spanish like that. They uh -huh. know, oh, sorry, you know. pimienta? Do you have your black pepper? The what? Black pepper? Black pepper, of course. Your ass is Throw some black pepper. pepper in there. A little bit of cayenne red pepper if you have pepper. And you got your garlic, right? Yeah, I did the garlic. You want more garlic? 
Oh, you put the garlic in there already? Yeah, I put the garlic in there. Okay, good. And you're good. You're ahead of me. You're just going to move that around. You know, you see me with my hat and everything. I'm looking like a Latino Benny Hanna guy. Our <laughs> <laughs> very own. Ah. This is what we're doing in here. Look at this. Yo, know, just talking what's about the guy that, that, that does us at Benihana. He's Spanish anyway, right? What's his name? Hey. Who, the chef at Benihana? No, no, there's a chef that we always ask for when we go to Benihana because it's my daughter's favorite restaurant. We go to any fancy place. She don't like nothing more than she likes Benihana. Benihana's is cracking. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing those stories about Pun. You know, forever he's he's always going to be remembered, missed, and loved, but for real, and always respected. And let because me tell you something about the West Coast. Pun was eventually moved to the West Coast. Pun loved, loved, loved the West Coast. He was like a fake Mexican. He thought he was from over there. He would tell me whenever we was over there, he was like, yo, twin, I'm going to move out of here. This is it. <laughs> This, I mean, wow, Pun. What did he love? What did he love so much about the West Coast? Would he tell you? I don't know. I think he was just so infatuated with uh, Mexican culture and West Coast culture. Like I said, when we went to the Grammys, you never seen a New York guy with finger waves. He did the Bay Area's finger waves. Like this guy, you know, he loved it out there. <laughs> I you think that. That's what's beautiful about hip hop, you know, like everybody from the East to the West Coast, everywhere, like from down South, everywhere. Like we're all just intermixed. So like everybody grabs a little bit of each other. Like even if people don't want to admit it, like that's the truth. And that's what makes it beautiful because it brings us all together. Like that's well, just- And at the time, it. you got to understand at the time, you know, Latinos, if they were, in the south or they were they weren't really like out out right you know what i'm saying so they was behind the scenes or whatever you know when pum was rocking there was places when i was rocking there was places in the south alabama stuff like that they didn't even know what a latino was wow so when we had a song like boricua morena, boricua and, morena. <laughs> They, they didn't want to play it in like Chattanooga. They was like, who the hell's a Boricua? Who's a, you know? So we had to break a lot of barriers. You guys knew it was going to be the ones to break the barriers, you know, for Latinos commercially. Now it's crazy because you could go anywhere in the United States and it's the, the blackest station is playing reggae tone at 12 noon. Yes. So, you know? It's a different time now. I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't know how good is your chopped meat, but mine's is looking good. Oh, mine's is phenomenal. Is it? Does it look like it's getting pretty cooked? Are you even out already? No, it's cooked. It's cooked. It's cooked. Cook. You can throw your tomatoes. You got your tomatoes? I got tomatoes. You can throw your tomatoes in there now. That's gonna make it juicy. ahora adelante yo voy a cocinar. Ahora va a ser el chef de la casa. <laughs> At least I can make this. So far, I, I'm, I can't believe I'm making this. You're going to be so impressed with yourself that you're going to be like, I can't believe I've never done this before. I think I'm different, though, because I'm so, uh, how can you say, obsessive or, like me, after this first time, the next time I came in, we had mozzarella cheese in the air, <laughs> all type of wild shit that don't belong in there. You no, know, like I, I'll turn it. I'll turn that's it the thing so though, crazy. Like, you could really make them with however you want. Like you could do anything out of these empanadas. Last time, you know what I did? I was craving something sweet, so and I had some leftover tapas for empanadas. So I cut up some some duraznos, some peaches, and I added a little bit of brown sugar, and I just like just sear them a little bit, and I put them, and I made empanadas out of it. Let me tell you, there's a restaurant in New York, in, in the Bronx. Uh, I don't think it's there no more, but it was called M Empanology. Empanology. Uh -huh. So the young kid. And when I tell you, this guy made uh, red velvet empanadas. All I think I've seen that on a show once. On Yo, like some cooking show. 
crazy. It's called uh, Empanology. I don't know who the chef is, but man, he made every kind of empanada you could think of. Oh, empanadas are so delicious. I went to uh, Colombia, and in Colombia, they had these ones filled with potatoes and just a little, little bit of beef. Oh my God, they were so delicious. And now I like to make potato empanadas too. They're so good. Man, why are you laughing, ass? Because as he uh, stays on the cooking channel, does she? She must have seen any recipe you ever thought of in your life, done. So I this asked her one day, when, when are you going to be able to cook like them? She was like, oh, no, I'll just be looking at it to look at it. <gasps> like, what's, what's the point that I bet she could cook if she tried, if she's seen them? She could cook. She cooks and she bakes She bakes cakes and stuff like that. She could cook. She bakes cakes. Well, after this, you're going to teach her how to make these empanadas. You're going to be. Oh, she's watching. She's here. <laughs> is your, if your meat is ready and, like, your tomatoes are a little bit cooked, we can mix the veggies that we had already cooked in with the meat. I'm jumping that's down. gonna be the that's the El Clasico Papa. That's your right there. How's it looking? Sheesh. We yeah. cooked them there. Yeah, my, you gonna try one of my empanadas? Okay. <laughs> Everybody's gonna be a, a crash dummy today. Everybody's gonna taste. Joe's first cooked meal ever. An empanada. Okay, so if you could turn that all down now, if it's all cooked and you just want to mix it, mix it all in there. No, I got it all in here. Good, so the flavors could just marry one another. Sometimes I even put a little huevito in there, but I'm not gonna do that today because it's just a lot. A little what? A huevito. An egg. In the plate. An egg. An egg. Oh, mamita. That's you do a like a boil? No. My nah. boyfriend's are Argentinian and they Patricia put egg in said, That's not Mexicano for real. She's not <laughs> throwing no huevito in here. A huevito. <laughs> we staying straight chi Chihuahua. <laughs> All right. We, we staying Chihuahua, Chicha, Chihuahua. Wait, wait, this is Juarez. This is Jimenez. Huh. Yeah. Okay. This now, deal. You, you have to go to a place. We're going to have to move you now. If you're all of that is ready, you're going to turn that off. We're going to go to a place where we can start the empanadas. You're going to okay, stop. Yeah, I guess back there. Yeah. There. And you're going to need your, your filling, your meat. I'm going to wash my hands for the 30th time. Let's see who's in here watching. G Boy, what up? Justin Medina, Chino85, Juan Ganardra, Big Boy you TV. Know, trying to be uh, COVID, COVID friendly right now. Wash my hands. Again. Gotta stay COVID friendly. Look at, let me do the thing. So let me ask, where are we live at? This is the fun part. We're live. We're live on YouTube at Real ninety two three LA. Oh wow! So we on YouTube right now. We are YouTube. Woo! <laughs> okay. So do you have your first tapa? Yes, I do. Do I gotta take okay, it out the plastic, right? Take it out of the plastic. This is another trick that my friend Julissa Calderon taught me. So you're gonna start to kind of just massage it from the middle out. Just kind of, you know, <laughs> masakito. <laughs> Un masaje, para se, so you could just get a little bit loose. Like I said, thin, right? Boy, uh huh. Just thin. Okay. I, you, I got me a ring in here. Papi's a ring. Do yeah. you have? Okay. What you need to is a fork. That's never a problem. And a little bit of water fork. nearby. What? A, a little bit of water nearby. Poquitita. Esto es como un mexicano pizza, huh? <laughs> Hey, I made a Mexican pizza the other day. I tried to recreate Taco Bell's Mexican pizza, and it came out way better. Taco Bell got a Mexican pizza? Yeah, they've had it for a while, but... You know, Taco Bell is really good. And, no, no, I'm telling... Well, I don't know the difference. I'm not Mexican, Okay, wait. But That's why. Because, look, I, I made that face because a while ago we got voted the number one Mexican restaurant in America. And I'm like, Taco hell... Bell? 
Yeah, As a Mexican, I can that. go take that. No, let me tell you something. I know the number one Mexican restaurant in America. I don't know if they still open. It was in Texas. It was called Mama Nymphus. Mama Nymphus? When you get Baby Bash on here, when you get Beach on uh -huh. here, ask him about Mama Nymphus in Texas, Houston, Texas. I'm going to have to ask him. Stop the tour bus over there just to tear that shit up and then keep going wherever else we was going. Do you have Mama a favorite Memphis? Do you have a favorite Mexican dish that you like or love? Man, I love it all. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love it. You, you know, you're talking a fat joke, man. <laughs> I couldn't tell you my favorite Puerto Rican dish. I couldn't tell you. I love food. I'm addicted to food. That's just, that's the problem. It's not you're like, like I'll it. You ready? Do you have your, your filling? Yes, I do. Where do I put the water at? Not yet. The, no, the water, we're going to put around the rim. So you're going to get about half a spoon of it. There you go. That You could get probably like one more spoon in there. Okay. And you're going to put it in the center, okay, of the tapa. I want them to smell what's going on here. Show them. Show them. Smell em. what Joe Crack is Show it up. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Baby! You got it in the center? Un poquito más. Tú sabes, yo te digo que cuando yo hago... Yo, I used to work in my uncle's bodega, right? Yeah. I used to make the sandwiches. Uh -huh. And nobody wanted a sandwich from nobody else but Fat Joey. And then you knew what's up. Like, ah. And then when I did one one day, he was like, you're giving them too much meat. You're giving them too much meat. <laughs> We're losing money. Look, it's all about the proportions. So let me see. You don't want to overstuff it because you're going to close it. So you're going to bring it together. Yeah, I didn't. Eso mucho también o today? Like yeah, this? It might be too fat. Hold up. You can take some out. It's okay. There I you go. I got it now. I got it. All right. Now this this, this going to be good with some brown rice and some, some cauliflower rice. It's. This, <laughs> yo, that whole. Okay, I got it now. It's going to be delicious. Okay. So you're going to grab it like a taco. You're going to pick it up. You're going to get one of your fingers like that, like you're doing with the water. And you're going to, around this rim, Kind of just add a little bit of water like that on one. Now bring it up. Like this. You can bring it up. Auntie's acting like she's a professional right now. There you go. Okay, so you have your fork ready? Yes. Okay, so with the fork around the rim. With the little, is that a problem? What? Is it a problem if it ripped a little? It has a little hole in it. It's okay. She could try to pinch it back together. It's okay. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Let me so start do this. this. I see now that the like this. Oh man, you start if like I this. this for real, I would have like a little TS logo and just hit the joint with the TS yonder. Just <laughs> There's to have it official. Did you use the like with the tip? You want to make sure you go around the rim though. So you're creating the little ridges all around the empanada, and it should be closing your empanada together. You see, Why like this. Can you see clothes? that? The Can you see this? The problem is, it's a hole in this thing right here. It's a, it, oh, wow, look. Do you see? You see my ridges? Now we're going to turn it around, and you're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So you want to make sure that that locks in really good. Don't put that. Okay, nobody cares. So flip it, and you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So both sides should look like this. And then you're gonna put that one to the side. You wanna start getting your skillet that you're gonna to use to fry them, start uh, heating up your oil. What I'm gonna do with the skillet? The one that you're using to fry the like empanadas, get that one ready. Start, para que prendan el aceite para friar, para Yeah, we ready, boy. This shit you ready, you're ready. You ready, you doing your second one? Like you talking to the wrong guy. Hey, somos el profesional. Profesionales aquí. <laughs> Here we go right now. I'm gonna make another one just to, you know. There you go. Put a little bit of that culture in there. Put that culture in the empanadas. Shout out to the real 92. Y'all know what it is. <laughs> the real deal, Joe Crack the Dawn. Making that empanada right now. Big boy. <laughs> you know, Doc Winters. <laughs> Yo, I always. I always mess around with Doc and I call him Doc Winters because 
Khaled always calls him Doc Winters. <laughs> I call him Doc Winters too. I love it. Shout you got out your to Doc. I love Doc. And his head is going to blow up. Can you tell Doc to send me my money? He's been owing me money for like ever. Hey, baby, it's COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I got Zell. He could Zell. I know, he said. I, I know what I did hear him say. You better show him that Bud Light. Or talk <laughs> about it. Yeah, you don't. That's why I mentioned it really, really early on. This this was brought to everybody by Bud Light. Thanks to Bud Light. This happened. Look at you got two done already. Look. How many you got? Let me see. Okay, so you just want to lay that down. On the other side. Yep. You let me know that's when your oil is ready. That's what you want. I meet that. Here you go. Look, look. Oh. <clears throat> more water? No water. Oh, you know what else water. you you know what else you're gonna need? You're gonna need like um maybe like a cookie sheet, and you're gonna wanna put a, a napkin like this, a towel, a napkin like this. Yeah. So we can so after we fry them, we're gonna put them here to lay so it could soak up the oil. So we have to have soaking up the oil. That's an ancient Latino trick. You already know it. <laughs> well, you know we don't fry the first. Oh, you already started? You already fried one? Oh, my God. The first one got fried. The first one got fried. I have to get started frying mine. Yo, listen. <laughs> you beat me. How you beat me? It's, this ain't fair. We're going to say you got no. No, man. This is you got help. You got help. I got a little help here. <laughs> <laughs> I got little help. But listen, let me tell you something. This is an amazing experience. Guys out there, you can do this yourself. It's simple. I, they taught me how to make empanadas. Eso. And I was on out here in these streets. What out. is what is one of your favorite Puerto Rican dishes? Well, in life, pero un poquito. Okay, okay. No mucho. Uh, in life. One of my favorite meals on the earth is octopus, whether it's Puerto Rican or from anywhere. I love pupo salad. I love octopus. You know, you know, I like I like different dishes from different from everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like I, 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 I love Dominican cooking. I love Italian. I love everything. You know, Jamaican, whatever. I, 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 there's something. You know, when you go to restaurants, you always look for the one good meal in the restaurant. Yeah. It's very rare you go to a restaurant that everything's good. Right. But there's always something they make that you like, wow, this is it. That's what I said about food, Joe, that food is just like music. It's it's universal. It really does so connect. It it's a language we all speak. We all hungry. We all want to eat. Mean, would you care to try my first empanada ever made? Ozzy, you should. And give us an honest review. Come through and taste it. There she goes, look. She... Okay. Wait, we can't see you. Just smile and say hi. <laughs> so beautiful. <laughs> Is she trying it? You gotta you give us your honest review. You didn't eat it like that. Come on. Did she try it already? Mm. How is it, Joe? Mm. <laughs> fire? You're really fire, though. You ready to open up your own restaurant? Well, I wouldn't say all that, but this is the fire right here. <laughs> Holy Joe, shit. Say I it. have, I have to give you your flowers. You've been... You've been in the game with consistency, consistency for so many years, doing so much for everybody in the culture. And Ozzy's trying the second empanada. Look at her. See, it was good. Or she's showing it off. <laughs> you paved, you paved the way for a lot There's of Latinos. No way these are flat free. You paved the way for a lot of Latinos, and 
I really, really appreciate you. I appreciate everything you stand for. Uh, before I let you go, though, looking back throughout your career, looking at a young Flo Joe, what piece of advice would you give your younger self? Oh, my God. I had too much. You know, I was, if it, keep it real with you, I was involved too much with the street life, you know, before this. And then when I rap, I almost felt like I was the street rapper. So it was a such thing as keeping it too real. Mm. And, um, and it hindered me from getting to another level at certain points. I'm sure Snoop Dogg, everybody had that problem. Of you course. Know, uh, so I would tell a, a young Joe, you know, be careful with, with your company. You know what I mean? And if you want to get ahead, it's one thing. I just think, you know, the rapper, yeah, you want to look out for your hood. You want to do whatever. But let, let your boy who's a rapper or your girl, let them grow. And they'll come back to make sure you straight too at another point. So, you know, you got to be very careful about who you got around you and, and all that. Because in this industry, you know, it seems like a street. It seems like everybody's real. But people could get intimidated if you're walking in with 20 gang members. If you walk in, you know, you actually would be scaring the money away. Mm. And so keep mindful of that. Just say, yo, guys, I got you. But, you know, I got to do this. That's mm. what I would tell a young fat Joe. That is great advice. And again, I think that that's something that has to be learned through experience and years. But luckily, hopefully, if people are listening, they're going to listen to what you just said and, and learn from that, you know. Joe, I'm going to let you finish up your empanadas. I thank you so much. And I truly want to congratulate you on all your success, your career. You have so many years ahead of you still. I want to know if that call from Eminem to get you out of retirement worked. Are you considering it? What well, I've been that? in the studio four days in a row listening to beats. So that, All right. That, and, and before that, I hadn't been in the studio for like seven months. So, so it's, you know, Eminem, somebody I obviously look up to. Uh, he's one of the greatest of all time. And, and if he tell me, yo, Joe, you don't, you don't need, you, you know, it ain't time for you to retire yet. You know, I got to really listen to the GOAT because Eminem is like somebody I really, really admire lyrically and as an artist. So I'm glad he gave me that call. It's funny, when he called me, I was at my mother's house. It was my father's birthday. And, then, and, and, and you know, that's how... My career started organically in my mother and my father's house. So maybe that was a signal. Hey, it's a full 360. It all came together. I'm happy he made that call. Thank you so much. For, Thank no, you no, so no. much for teaching me how to make empanadas. You, you made my life amazing. My wife gave me the thumbs up. Oh. She technically likes my empanada. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Ozzy like it? Woo! <laughs> there you go. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Thank you so much. Stay blessed. Thank you so much. Bye bye. And thank your daughter for helping us today too. Thank you, Ozzy. Thank you guys for watching.